Hello there! My name is Tanner, and I'd like to welcome you back to my YouTube channel. Now, before we begin with today's video, I'm just going to give you a few minor updates. First of all, I have a new desk, so that'll definitely help me film from a better perspective and make sure that I don't have a double chin every time I look into the camera. Second, to make finding my YouTube channel a whole lot easier, I altered it so that the four digit number that used to be on the end of it is now off. So now my channel name is just Blue Pantheon, all one word. Now that we've got all that out of the way, Today's video will be part two of my December PG series, link to part one of the cards and in the description down below. For those of you that don't know, I'm creating a role-playing game, or RPG for short, based on my fantasy world. And because of this, I'm creating some of my own characters for that world, one for each day in December, using the way I made up for any future players of my fantasy RPG. I would roll a d8, an eight-sided die for those of you who don't know, and whatever number it landed on for that day would be the archetype of the character of that day. Now, like with the last video, I'm going to read the lore of each character first and then talk about the character themselves and the creative process behind each one. So without further ado, here is December RPG Part 2. Finian O'Shee and Una Flannery met each other years and years ago. He was a cobbler by trade, as most leprechauns are, and she worked at the local news scroll company, writing the obituaries, quite fitting for a banshee. They kept unintentionally meeting at the same cafe where they would just happen to order and eat the same lunches. As all young couples do, they started dating, and after five years of courtship, they got married. Now, three years into that marriage, their son Seamus surprised them both. He was raised in a loving, wonderful home, and, of course, his dad taught him to cobble, as his father taught him before that, and his father before that. Now, the seventh role landed on hybrid, so, again, I chose a character that was originally one that I made for a fantasy novel based on my world. Seamus is the hybrid son of a leprechaun and a banshee, and therefore has both the ghostly powers and shriek of a banshee, and the luck, clover, crafting, and coin powers of a leprechaun. Drake was born the son of two famous riders, Layla and Jake Serpenthide. Sadly, his father died before he was born, and his mother died shortly after childbirth. She lived just long enough to name him and name her and her late husband's mounts as his guardians. From that day forward, Igneous the fire dragon and Snowflake, his ice dragon mate, raised Drake as if he were their own child, and he grew up among his adoptive brothers and sisters. When he was old enough, they told him the stories of his parents' adventures, as well as what had happened to them. Drake only hopes that he can live up to those stories one day. Now, the eighth roll was the first time I rolled a mage. So, once again, here's a character from that fantasy novel that I mentioned. Spoiler warning, there will be more. Now, Drake is a mage who, due to his unique family situation, specializes in both draconic fire magic and draconic ice magic both of which was taught to him by, of course, his adoptive parents, Igneous the Fire Dragon and Snowflake the Ice Dragon. Damien and Magnolia were magic school sweethearts. They were friends since before their specialties were realized and officially started dating about a year after the realization ceremony. After six years together, they got married, and three years after that, Juniper was born. While Magnolia became the local veterinarian, Damien opened up a bakery next door, using his sweets magic to craft enchanted goods that became well-known all over town. Now, Juniper, on the other hand, wanted something a bit more than just helping animals or making treats infused with magic. She wanted to focus on her music and wanted to travel the world as well. Her parents actually loved that idea and gave her their blessing. 
Magnolia gave her daughter a scroll containing a secret spell that was passed down from mother to daughter for generations. And Damien gave her a notebook, both to record her songs in, but also included special recipes that he asked her to use anytime she needed. They told her she was welcome if she was ready to come home and visit. Now this was the first and only time that I had rolled Demi-Myth, so I wanted to knock the character out of the park. Juniper is, well, a Demi-Myth, whose human father is both a mage and an oracle, and her mother is a hybrid, half satyr, one quarter fairy, one quarter genie. As such, Juniper possesses, among other abilities, the agility, speed, and dexterity of a satyr, as well as flight and nature magic that she channels through her olos flute. Basically, imagine a recorder with one mouthpiece but a V-shaped body. Douglas Ravenwing had been a reaper his whole life, having come from a long line of Shinigami. He was doing a job on a battlefield when his eyes met a woman with harsh yet beautiful features, wearing a cloak made entirely of dark feathers. When their eyes met, something just clicked. They continued seeing each other, usually bonding after a battle, and eventually, Douglas found that his lover was with child. When they both found out, that was when she revealed herself to be the immortal known as the Morrigan and that their child would, in fact, be a demigod. When she gave birth to Jet, she told his father that, as is tradition, he would need to be raised by his non-immortal parent. However, unlike most of her fellow immortals, he would know her, but until the appointed time, he would not know his true heritage. By far my favorite character of this group, the dice came up with a half-blood demigod this time, as opposed to a raised demigod, so I came up with Jet, the son of a Shinigami, aka a Grim Reaper, and the Celtic immortal who was once worshipped as the goddess of, among other things, crows, battle, and sovereignty. He's pretty much the stereotypical goth, clothed entirely in black, with a personality I can only describe as constantly over it. If I were to do an impression of him, I would just say, I just want to do my job and not really care. I, I don't know why I love him so much, but I do. The story of Chronom Horologius starts, as most Tsukumogami stories do, with an ordinary object, in his case, an ordinary pocket watch, passed down from father to son for generations, sometimes merely a tool, other times, someone's most prized possession. One hundred years since he was created in a watchmaker's shop. One hundred years in that form. Chronom knew the day of his first transformation was coming, because suddenly he started feeling. I don't know how to describe it, but suddenly he was happy, content, sad, annoyed and many other feelings. The day he first transformed was one that his current owner will never forget. He is young, this is true, but he treats Chronom less like master and servant, but more like friend. Now this role landed on Magical Being, and just like Blade in my last video, I wanted to create a Magical Being character that was different than what was usual. So, I chose to create a character that was a Tsukumogami, a being from Japanese mythology that essentially is what happens when an inanimate object lasts for a hundred years, thereby gaining a spirit. In Chronom's case, he was once a pocket watch, and because of this, alongside the standard Tsukumogami abilities, he has the ability to manipulate time to a certain degree. Interessant, no? Lucilla was the daughter of a wealthy aristocratic couple. Her father was a vampire, her mother a were-sneak. Like all were-beasts and part wares, Lucilla experienced her first change underneath the first full moon after she reached her 13th birthday. Her mother was, of course, thrilled, 
and though he would have preferred she was full vampire like him, her father was nonetheless proud of his daughter as well. Her parents had expected that, considering her parentage, the chances of Lucilla being either full vampire or full were-snake was slim, to say the least. At least she inherited features from both sides of her heritage, which was all they could ever ask for. Lucilla lived a life of luxury, at least until her parents went on an adventure with their old friends and never returned. Lucilla now lives in the family mansion, waiting until she comes of age to get her inheritance. Now, the role for this character landed on Hybrid. So, Lucilla, a werepire, specifically a Lamia due to her were-snake heritage, was created. I imagine her to have a very reserved yet regal personality due to her aristocratic upbringing. And I also imagine her to be the type of person to do what she thinks is best for her at the time. Born the son of two prominent members of his little Minotaur community, Taurus, like all young males, was raised to be a warrior as soon as he was old enough to wield a weapon. His father taught him how to fight and hunt, and his mother taught him all the stories and ways of their people. Taurus still remembers those stories, and he wanted to see the world when he was old enough. Now, when he was deemed to be old enough, the elders of his community gave him their blessing, and he's been exploring the world ever since. So the final role for this week was for a magical being character, and looky here, another character that was originally created for the novel based in my fantasy world. Taurus is, as mentioned before, a minotaur, so when you first meet him, he definitely cuts a fairly intimidating figure. But, when you get to know him, he might surprise you with his fairly gentle demeanor, and regale you with both stories of his travels and or his childhood growing up in a minotaur community. And there we have it! That was part two of my December RPG series. If you want to read more about these characters, I'll put the links to their respective articles on my website in the description down below. If you like this video and you want more, please give this video a like and subscribe down below so you don't miss any new videos. Also, if you have any other ideas for any future videos, please leave your thoughts in the comments down below and it might just happen. Alright, well that's all the time I have for this video, so I will see you all next week with the third group of characters. See you then!